Hey guys, Brandon here. Uh, this episode ran pretty long, so we're going to cut it into two. Uh, so this one sitting will be actually uh, episodes 13 and 14. Uh, some pretty crazy stories. Uh, looking forward to you guys listening in on this. So here's part one of Treasure Hunter for Nostalgia, episode 13. Hello and welcome to episode 13 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Nick Jones back from camping and from vacation. How how was your time? Oh, good little break. Uh, we went. My family and I went up to Rollins Lake for a few days. Um, nothing spectacular. Just went out on the boat a few times, floated around. Uh, let my daughter, my two-year-old daughter Rosa, get into some trouble. She came home a mess. My, we took our dog Link up there with us as well. He came over the mess as well. It was all good. Just good camping. And you say you didn't do anything too spectacular, but I remember seeing you with the video playing Bubbles. That was pretty spectacular. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you saw it. Did my wife post that on Facebook or something? Yeah. Yes, yeah, she did. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> no, uh, my daughter... Her two-year-old cousin David was there as well, and they get off on bubbles for whatever reason. <laughs> and my wife invested in this bubble wand, like it just makes humongous bubbles, probably like a foot in diameter. And I just made a shitload of bubbles for them, and that that made their day. So, uh, game of the week, Mega Man Six. Did everyone get a chance to play? Yeah. Yep. I I just played it on. Uh, a couple, a couple nights ago, actually, it was the only opportunity that I had to play any sort of video games at all, and I knew that I had to finish it that night, so I got my uh, co Mountain Dew Code Red, <laughs> I got some Trail Mix, I was ready, I had my game field ready, and I got it done in a few hours. Awesome. Let's see, so where did we want to start? I'll, I'll start with mine, uh, if you don't mind, because I probably have the less notes, this is Brad. I started out, I beat Flame Man first because I thought he'd oppose the most challenge. Beat him with the Mega Buster. I think he gives you the jet adapter. Power. Power. He gives you the power one first. I was like, oh cool, I got the power suit already. And then I went and thought Flame Man would beat Plant Man. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently plants aren't susceptible to fire in Mega Man 6, but I beat him anyway and got the jet adapter. So that was cool. I got both adapters in one go. Yeah, that sucked for me because Brad told me he got two adapters right off the bat. Apparently, I beat six <laughs> Robot Masters without getting an adapter, leaving logically the only two to be Flame Man and Plant Man to get those two power suits. So it sounded like you had a pretty easy ride throughout the rest of the level. Oh, yeah, that, that jet adapter, if you don't know, Mega Man actually gets two power suits in this game. Uh, kind of like Mega Man X, you get the armor upgrades, but you get a whole suit that Rush turns into a, a suit for you, and if he's power, he actually gets the power up and break blocks, uh, break roll blocks. If you get the jet adapter, you actually get a float in midair for a few seconds, kind of like Princess Peach, but a little bit more jet propelled, and you just get, get a coast throughout all the levels. I was like, oh, this is so sweet. <laughs> Yeah, that was new to me. I've, I've never played Mega Man 6, and I didn't play Mega Man 5, so th this was new to the whole Mega Man genre, correct? They didn't have that in 5? No, they didn't. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was really cool as well, though. The jet pack, I, I felt like I was cheating a lot of the times, to be honest <laughs> with you. Like, whenever there were some obstacles that I was supposed to get around, I just threw on my jet pack. And ordinarily, I wouldn't do that, but because I was on a tight schedule, <laughs> I, I, I guess I just did it the cheap way. <clears throat> So, you know, after that I just beat the rest of the Robot Masters. I'll let you go through and talk about what levels you want to talk about. Then we could talk about the castles. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I don't know how, if, like, Dr. Wiley thinks Mega Man's an idiot because <laughs> he just comes with this, like, uh, stupid, like, disguise, like, oh, that's not Dr. Wiley. <laughs> and I, uh, who are these, Dr. X? I mean, yeah. He's Mr. X. Yeah, Mr. X. So he's like, this will fool him. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so the first level I did was Tomahawk Man. What's that guy with the glasses and the nose, that Groucho Marx? Yeah, the Groucho Marx. kind of like a Groucho Marx <laughs> disguise. <laughs> yeah. And that's what, the, what I was, you know, I was fumbling there, that's what I was. I was trying to think of that disguise, but there, yeah, stupid disguise. 
So I did Tomahawk Man. I thought, this guy looks like he has a lot of power. Maybe I get the power suit from him. Indian Petey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's an Old West level. Yeah, those are the ones when people shot the guns at you. Yeah, I'm so tired. I wrote that down <laughs> on my notes. I love the cowboy robots and how they were firing the six shooters. That was awesome. And uh, they had the hard hat incubator. That's where I came across it first. Where they're oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it spat out the hard hat guys. I was a little disappointed by that. I thought there was going to be a little bit more uh, spectacular. I, I'm using that word a lot, I guess, for whatever reason. But uh, I don't know. The, the the hard hat guys are like a staple of the game. You kind of, ho- I was kind of hoping for something more out of that thing, but... All you had to do is just shoot like the little bottom of it. And yeah, there was to it. Yeah, it would be cool if it was like a real. Uh, what are those Tamagotchi machines where you get the prizes? Yeah, Tamagotchi. <laughs> and we're like randomly like right. uh, instead of a hard hat, like a super hard hat would come out. That'd be cool. Or like a female hard hat. Yeah, you don't see any of those. Yeah. Are those in the game at all? I don't think so. Oh no. wow! So no Capcom some ideas. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, so I fought Tomahawk Man. Um, pretty easy. I scalped him and sent it back to the reservation. <laughs> <laughs> I take a piece of that. That's not funny. <laughs> uh, Jeremy off a of Big Brother would be a thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was part Indian, right? Fifty percent. Yeah, uh, and he was like, Woo! I was like, dude, you're making fun of your own age. Well, I think that's heck of funny. I wrote down that he, I, his, his weapon was pretty easy to evade, but the thing that annoyed me about Tomahawk Man was he, he just, like, kept walking at you. Yeah, he would power at you. He was, like, really aggressive. <laughs> it was hard to avoid hitting him. His weapons yeah. were easy to get uh, get around, but... Kind of like Fireman from Mega Man 1. Yeah. I was watching Sam play that the other day, and Fireman just blows the fire at you, and, he, like, nothing phases him. He's yeah. just like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, like, yeah. He doesn't stop. Let's see, the next one, the next level I did, uh, I went to Centaur Man. Uh, because for some reason I thought maybe a tomahawk would beat centaur. Of course I was wrong. I remember on Vegas vacation when the dude was painting, what's his name, uh, the singer? Wayne Newton. Wayne Newton with the wife and he was painting him as a centaur. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> so centaur man, uh, the water stage, uh, not too bad. Uh, I um, was able to beat him and send him to the glue factory. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Did you have anything on Centaur Man? Um, I thought it was kind of weird that he had, his ability was the same as like Flash Man. Yeah, I didn't get that at all. Yeah, he had he was a the Sea Flash, like it would flash and it would hurt him. And I don't think it froze time too much, did it? It did. It did. Oh, did yeah, it? Yeah, he had he had the ability where he would use his Flash ability. You could not move, and then he'd fire his weapon. But his weapon was. He was he was a really easy boss. Actually. Yeah. Wasn't it like a pellet? And yeah. then when it, it was hit the wall, it broke. Hit, exactly. When it hit the wall, it would spread. And sometimes it wouldn't spread. And I was like, oh, cool. Oh, I didn't <laughs> notice. I don't remember that. And if you there. stand in the middle of the screen, the pellet just goes right yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really easy boss. And that was all he did. Like he would just shoot little pellets that went super slow. And he would he. You think a centaur is a horse? He's gonna like charge at you, but he didn't even do that really. Yeah. And this is the one that had the stats at the beginning of level mm-hmm. of the bosses. Yeah. <laughs> and centaur man like had heck of movement, and like I remember it's high movement. But did they really matter? Like, I think the bosses took away the same life as they would like if. Yeah, I didn't pay attention I to didn't it. Pay attention to it Maybe if some research was done, you could tell, but no. nothing noticeable. That's all I had on. Uh, Wind man. Uh, he was full of hot air. <laughs> <laughs> Clever. <laughs> and Turning into um, <laughs> ash from Evil Dead. <laughs> we right there. Uh, I tried to come up with a funny quip for each boss. Okay. Uh, I'm doing good. The, yeah. <laughs> the uh, centaur flash was the one that beat Windman. I actually don't have anything written down for his level. I, I thought he was pretty tough actually as well. But yeah, with the centaur flash, he was pretty easy. I could I wouldn't even try beating him without that. Yeah. Um, there was a, a note that I wrote on the level. There were these flat fans that like blew you up into the air, and then they would come from the top and they'd blow you downwards. I died a couple times on that. Oh yeah. Because it, to me, it seemed like they were inconsistent in how far, how hard they would blow blow you up into the air. Mm-hmm. And you kind of had to judge as you were going up to move over to the next part, otherwise you'd fall into a pit or something like that. Yeah. And I died a couple times there. I thought that was. I don't know. Maybe like like you said earlier in the show that uh, 
I just wasn't good enough. The game wasn't <laughs> cheating, but I, I felt like the game was cheating. But <laughs> <laughs> so I eventually I did it, so I guess I just wasn't good enough. Uh, next up, I did Blizzard Man. I fed him to the Eskimos. <laughs> Um, you're gonna offend the Eskimo people. Yeah, you're you're working on uh, <laughs> on all the races and culture. Uh, I don't have much to say about Blizzard Man. Uh, I he was pretty easy to avoid when he did his uh, rolling spin, and he would hit the wall, and you know he you could run away from it or go under him. He was one of the against Fireman, right? Or not Fireman? He Plant Man. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how you got to Plant Man without going to Blizzard Man. <laughs> yeah, to me, the logical choice after Flame Man was Blizzard Man. Well, Blizzard could have killed Fireman, I thought. And yeah, I thought, it would go either way. Yeah. But after I finished Flame Man, I was like, oh, Blizzard Man's done. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I was thinking Pokemon, I think, yeah. with the grass and the fire, yeah. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> but there I have one little note that I wrote about the level. I thought, are you guys familiar with the sport of curling? Yeah, yeah. I love curling. <laughs> Did you notice that they used those as enemies in the in the level? Oh yeah, yeah. The, the pogo guys? No, no. No, they weren't pogo guys. They're just they're, they're called curling stones. They're just little like discs that have little handles that stick mm -hmm. all on top of them. They just kind of slide over the ground. I thought that was kind of cool that they included that in there as as one of the enemies. Yeah, I, whenever they do Winter Olympics, I want to see curling events, but they never play it on TV. Uh, you got to watch like CNBC, one of the, the lesser known NBC yeah, channels. Yeah, I've seen them all, all the time. Yeah. That's like a tight. I, I still don't know how it works, but I know you hit your disc into other discs. Yeah. There's a curling game on, of, like they do a curling version on some game. I can't remember. WarriorWare, Inc. Is it? Yeah, and then you have to push B to curl. Oh. Like one of the quick mini games. Yeah. It's on Warrior No, War. but there's another one too that's way more fun than Warrior War. That I can't remember. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I, I remember that. I can't remember either. We'll look it up. Yeah. Uh, so next, after Blizzard Man, I went to Night Man. Uh, his, I think he had my favorite level. The castle theme mm -hmm. is cool. It had a lot of spears and spikes and um, actually beat him without even getting hit. I uh, felt like Dayman, Champion of the Sun, when I fought him. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm guessing you guys don't don't get that reference because you never saw It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. No. No. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like one of the best episodes ever. Aaron will probably get it, given <laughs> that he's from Philadelphia. Is that your quip for that? Yep, it sure is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and after uh, Nightman is where I uh, stopped for the night. I beat six of them and I was like... Didn't get a power suit. Oh well. <laughs> you know, night man. Uh, I, I, not the not the boss himself, but the level. There was a part where there were these strings that made you jump, and if you were holding down the jump button, oh, is that that level? Yeah. I hate that part. Oh. There was one section in the level. You know, when, when they're just below you, it's fine. You can kind of deal with it. But there's one section where they're above and below you, yep. and they would just bounce you back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you couldn't do anything. And even when you just pushed. Like to the right slightly, it would go yep. above and beyond and run into one of those little spike things that moved yep. back and forth. Eventually, I just held down uh, right just to, just <laughs> to power through it and, and hope that it hope that I made it through. And let me, I, I died there a couple times also. Let me guess, you used the jet on that part. Oh, I didn't think probably. About that. Yeah, I probably did. I don't know if it would last the entire time because no, it, it was a pretty long little section. Yeah, I, that that frustrated me to no end that part. Yeah. That was the only note that I had on my map. But I do agree. I like the uh, the environment and the level. That was cool. Yeah. Um, so then I went to Flame Man after I started back up the next day. And I took the wind out of his sails. I know that doesn't really match. No. But, <laughs> but I took the wind out of his sails when I beat him. Can't you, like, make some sort of gay joke about him being a flamer? I didn't even like think that? about that, yeah. <laughs> I could have. <laughs> and I'm going to upset the Eskimos. Why not the homosexual audience? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't really have anything on him other than one of his attacks was kind of annoying. He used this attack where he would uh, shoot, like, a, a bunch of pillars of flame. Yeah, the, the flame walls, yeah. And you can't do anything against them. If you sh your buster cannon won't go through them, and it's, like, almost impossible to, to dodge them because they come up in random spaces. Yeah, they do, and they it's not even consistent. They yeah. Like, one will come up, then it'll be heck of fast or slow. Yeah. It was hard to avoid. So you just kind of had to power through it, really. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just can't avoid being hit. <laughs> and then 
this level was the worst for me. Um, Plant Man. Uh, I hated this level so much. It's where I died the most. It was the part where they had the springs from Nightman, but there were pits and the fish would come up. And oh yeah, yeah, I do remember oh, that. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. And uh, just when you, like when you get up to a, a, you're bouncing on these springs trying to make this huge leap to another set of springs with no uh, no end in sight, and then the fish would come up. You're like, okay, and then one time the fish wouldn't come up. I'm like, all right, and right when you jump, the fish would come up and kill you on the pit. I would. I shook my controller many times <laughs> on that level. <laughs> that was one of those uh, levels where they introduced this this little enemy. It was just a little grasshopper. Same oh, same yeah. Rush. I fucking hate those things. They're too low so that you can't shoot them while they're on the ground. You can only shoot them while they're jumping at you in midair. Yeah. That kind of shit I hate about Mega Man because... Like I said, many times, Dr. Light can make his arm <laughs> so that it can angle down like 45 <laughs> degrees so you, that you can shoot shit that's on the ground. And same same concept, he should be able to be angle his arm 45 degrees up to shoot <laughs> stuff on the ceiling. But or at least duck or something. Something, I mean, yeah. yeah. And those things jump heck of far and it's frustrating. The good, the good thing is they die in one hit, but just trying to hit them is horrible. Yeah. yeah. It's probably better just to avoid them, I guess, but... I, I like to try to kill everything, I guess. It's a flaw in my game strategy. There's also these big gorilla guys that were kind of a pain in the ass, too. Do you remember that? Yeah. Like, you had to shoot their fist that was on the ground. Up oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. occasionally he'd fire his other fist at you. Yeah. And his other attack was he'd just shoot a spread of little bullets at you. And those were really hard to avoid, also, mm -hmm. unless you were, like... Unless he was far enough away where they would angle out enough. Yeah. You could avoid them, but otherwise you couldn't avoid them. Yeah, Plant Man, I, that was the level I did not like at all. <coughs> uh, I think we forgot Yamamoto, man. Uh, did I? Yeah, you didn't discuss Yamamoto. Oh, maybe that's on the next page? Yama Yamato, man. Because uh, I, I know I had a quip saying that I dropped the A-bomb on him, <laughs> but I can't remember. <laughs> oh, shit. God damn. <laughs> it's very insensitive. You should make it more uh, more current and be like, oh, yeah, I threw a tsunami at that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me see. Uh, Yellow Motor Man. Um, I see a Y right there. Or is that a 4? Mm -hmm. Can't read your own chicken scratch, huh? Yeah, that says Yellow Motor Man, but I could have sworn I... Oh, yeah. Tom Hunk Man beats him. Yes. Dropped the A-bomb on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was pretty easy to, to fight. Which I, I was kind of surprised by that, given that the game is designed to Japan, mm -hmm. and their their one Japanese character is kind of a bitch. They're they're kind of <laughs> humble over there. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I like the level though. The level kind of ha had a cool Japanese theme to it. Yeah, like, like a um, pagoda. What are those things called? Aren't they called like shojis or something like that? Those wa those like paper thin walls yeah. that they use. Shojis, I think. Yeah, I remember seeing some of those in there as well. <laughs> I'd hate to go there because I'd hate to like walk through one like just <laughs> right here. <laughs> <laughs> They'd probably bow at you. <laughs> <laughs> be all powerful, be the biggest one there. Yeah. <laughs> don't drop bomb, don't drop bomb. <laughs> <laughs> what, is it, what is it from South Park? Uh, chicken and cow. <laughs> well then, Olsen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you get on me for talking about the retard. <laughs> hey, I'm just quoting Trey and Matt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Mr. X level? Yeah. Did you have anything else to say about the other levels, Nick? Okay. So, Dr. X level, or Mr. X, so frustrating. There is, near the beginning of the level, there was a broken window. Did you did you see that? I saw it. I didn't even try to go for it. I tried it a few times, but it w I Is was that when you're on the platform? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got it. And then there's spikes above you, too, so you can't jump. Yeah, every high. time I jumped, I, w I would get hit by the spikes. I got in there. Is What's it, in there? I think it's a shortcut with a bunch of one-ups. Yeah. What you do is you um, use your power suit. You jump on the, the first platform, and then it changes. Mm -hmm. So then you, you for what I would do is I jump on the platform and jump back until it changed. Then I jump on the platform and then jump over there and use my power hit and then I fall down and then I go use my jet adapter to go over there. Oh, so it would stay broken. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, I you thought about it, but I just didn't think it was worth whatever was in there. <laughs> I thought you'd at least get something better than fucking beat. I hate that bird. <laughs> oh, and you useless. Yeah, because I don't. I think it's on this level. There's like a dude twirling a spear like by a ladder. Yeah. 
And so I'm sitting there like, okay, Beat, go get him. And he won't do nothing. Beat won't ever go kill my fucking enemies. Yeah, I don't I don't get the point behind him. Beat is a little annoying ass bird, kinda like Navi on Ocarina of Time. <laughs> but much more dumber than Navi. It's like sitting there, it's a little bird floating around that's supposed to go hit enemies. I remember he killed Wily in part five for me, but he wouldn't I'd shoot, I'd do everything, I'd jump like right next to the enemy. So I don't know if he goes get items or what, but I never used them. And he was such that. a bitch to get. You had to beat, rebeat for it. Well, I had to rebeat for the bosses because you had your power suit before you even got to fight beat. Right? Yeah. But in order to get beat, you had to uh, play through four of the levels and there were alternate paths near the end of each level. So you had to beat that boss by using either the power suit or the jet suit to get to the Wily door. And then once you beat uh, those four bosses you spell out beat and a little bird joins you useless fuck yeah, yeah uh, I I told Brad and Brandon that I only had one night to beat the game and Brandon gave me a heads up on the beat bird that it was not worth getting so I just skipped all of that stupid <clears throat> yeah there's like some alternate passages you have to go through and I was like nah I'm just gonna beat the game <laughs> it's not even worth it nah. so uh I have Dr. X or Mr. X stage one the boss was um, what is it like walking two machines, machines. Yeah, yeah, walking. They're, they're on like tracks that just went randomly throughout the room yeah. and they just shot things at you they're pretty easy yeah I used my power and it was like boom blew them back uh, flame man really? worked on them I didn't, I didn't think to use that I, I, I used flame man's mm-hmm. ability as well stage 2 uh, did you have anything for the stage 2 written down no, I, no, no, I didn't write any notes on any of the levels other than the bosses yeah so stage 2 was the wall climber yeah and uh, I put down Tomahawk Man. Yep. That was the only oh, thing yeah. that I could think to use against him. And that was a that was a bitch too because I ran out of Tomahawk Man, <laughs> and I nothing else would hit him. <laughs> like he would come down for like a split second, and I ended up dying and saying Tomahawk Man is a sp- sp- uh, spinning Tomahawk that actually flies up like a um, propeller. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so I died on that thing, and I just... Did you have to do like I had to do against the security room, where you just sit there and let him kill you because you can't do anything? Basically, yeah. <laughs> my kids, they actually beat Mega Man 2, and they were cursing the security room. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of shit. <laughs> <laughs> actually, Sam's the one who played all the way through it. Logan beat Flashman stage one time, and then Sam reset it just so he could say he beat the whole thing by himself. <laughs> and then Jordan made a Facebook and said... Uh, I said, I'm so proud of my kids. They all beat Mega Man 2, and I tagged Jordan in it. And so what does Sam do? He goes and logs in Jordan's <laughs> account. <laughs> and he, he put as Jordan. Sam's actually the one who played through the whole game and beat it. Uh, I didn't know see that post. I saw that. Uh, I, I didn't know it was Sam that did the post, though. That's funny. Yeah. I thought it was Jordan trying to be, like, humble. And <laughs> no, that was Sam's evil ass. <laughs> That's, like, a funny... <laughs> and then the next level, we actually fight Dr. X, right? Because there's only three levels in the castle. If no, I'm there's right. like this tank mm-hmm. thing that you have to fight. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a hard hat power suit kind yeah. of. And I use Blizzard on that. And it sucks because when you use Blizzard Man, it takes away a huge chunk of the power, of Blizzard Man's power. So uh, I ran out on Blizzard Man and had to yeah. fight with my pellets, I believe. That's what I did also. And then the fourth <clears throat> stage uh, was, I think... Mr. X and I used Flame Man. Yep. Yeah. I think his thing looked like he'd be weak against Flame Man. I don't remember what he looked like. It's all haze. <laughs> oh, the mount, the code red. Yep. Keeping you awake. I was in a trance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next was, then all of a sudden, what happens? Mr. X turns into Dr. Wily, Sir fucking prize. What the fuck? <laughs> Where'd that come from? I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> uh, so I have uh, Wily, the boss. The first boss was a Brontosaurus or Brachiosaurus. Bra- yeah, I, was, I put down Brachiosaur. Yeah, that's tight. Weak against Yam- Yamato Man, I think. Mm-hmm. I put Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> you must have really been in the haze. <laughs> well, when I saw it, I was like, oh shit, if the dragon's going to be like Mega Man 2 Dragon. And I was like, I'm scared. And it was, like, it was like the easiest boss ever. Yeah, you could just sit in one spot and he would not hit you. Because you had to jump on a platform to hit him. Yep. But... If you sit in the corner, he wouldn't be able to touch mm-hmm. you. I didn't even use a uh, a special weapon against him. I just used the Buster Cannon. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Level two was it the tank. I wrote down bubble tank. Yeah. Um, was it underwater? 
I don't remember. Was it the, the hard hat tank or no? That was the first one, right? I'm going to research what the <laughs> heck that bubble, what, what is bubble tank? <laughs> you guys can go ahead. I'm, gen I'm just doing it for my own curiosity because I don't remember what it was. Okay. And uh, I was with Vince Windman. Yeah, I, I wrote that down. But I don't know what the heck it looked like. Thanks. Playing all these, because I played Mega Man X too, and I'm getting all confused with each other with all the games. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one. That was the Gauntlet, wasn't it? No, that's fourth. Uh, fourth is Boss Gauntlet. What's the um, three of F dash furs or fangs or what's F the, fangs? Yeah, what, what's the third boss in Wily's Castle? Uh, I I don't have any other boss up on the, other than the tank. Um, I, I might have missed one. I don't know. Are you sure it wasn't the gauntlet after that? Because I have three and then F something F ones. Is that something for the level? I don't know. Do you need to start making more legitimate notes? It's either I start off real strong with my notes in the beginning, <laughs> and then when I get to like the end, I just don't care anymore. It's like. <laughs> Too hard. Maybe I should have Jamilo take the notes while I play and like yeah. <laughs> speak and then have her write down. <laughs> <laughs> write what I say. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, Boss Gauntlet, pretty uh, straightforward. And then uh, the Wily was extremely easy. I couldn't believe how easy it was. The only thing I didn't like about it was we could get Tomahawk Man on all three of his stages. So you had to use your Tomahawk and make sure you hit each time. Okay. <sighs> I didn't do that. I, I used the Buster Cannon on his first form, and I used the Nightman uh, mm -hmm. Ball and Chain or whatever. Yeah, was I think I used Nightman too. On the second one, I used Tomahawk on the third mm -hmm. form. The third form was where like he, he almost was like kind of like Ganon from the original. Yeah. Movie where he would, like disappear and reappear and fire stuff at the at you, and then he just disappear really quickly. So you had to kind of be in the right position in order to attack, and you just kind of had to get lucky. And that first stage mm -hmm. when he when he that huge machine and he crushes you, that w that was the hardest one for me, just avoiding it and making sure not to get hit by spikes. Um, I, I did write a couple of things that I thought were interesting about the game. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed this or not. I and I didn't play through five, so maybe it was a, a corrected in five. But you remember? I think it was. <laughs> Brandon just passed gas. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Mega Man 2 where um, there was a situation where like if you if you switched your uh, weapon from one thing to or to another you would fall off yeah. the ladder. Yeah. In Mega Man 6 they corrected that. You could actually change I, weapons and you wouldn't fall. I did notice that. Um, I remember saying, oh that's cool, I don't didn't fall off the ladder this time. Right, right, right. The other thing I thought was interesting is uh, as you, Brandon pointed out to me before I started playing with it, there's energy tanks all over this game. Yeah. So it was pretty easy you didn't really have to be conservative with uh, your use of the energy tanks but there's a certain point where you got up to nine energy tanks but there's two digits there where it says like it says zero one zero two all the way up to zero nine and thinking oh i can get into the double digits here and it, w it would stop at zero nine i was like why do you have the zero there if it only goes up to nine and i thought that was kind of weird yeah but that was the only thing i wrote down okay yeah those energy tanks i had i think eight by the time i beat the game I, I gotta admit, I exhausted my. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't find why they'd be quite as easy as you did, apparently. <laughs> I gotta do kick a bad, I'm sorry. Alright. <laughs> you gotta continue if you like. You're not cutting that right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it for Mega Man 6. Next week, we will be playing the Super Nintendo version of Mega Man, Mega Man 7, so that should be fun. Looking uh, forward to it. So now we've got treasure hunting for this week. Treasure hunting, we actually evolved it to uh, a winner and a loser each week between Brandon and I. Uh, we don't want to throw Nick into the mix because he's uh, still getting his wings for treasure hunting. <laughs> so uh, what, we're, what we did was we're going to find the value of the games or the treasury brought there'll be an apparent winner and a loser the winner gets to spin a homemade wheel that I made uh, to get prizes the loser will spin the same wheel to get a punishment and we have all sorts of prizes and punishments should I go over them real quick sure so for the winner we have the wheel of pleasure <laughs> uh, basically what we're doing is we're spinning a dartboard has 1 through 20 on it 
Uh, if the player lands on one or nine, you get player's choice. Then it goes uh, two to eight, you get five dollars. Three, four, and five, you get uh, Brandon and I split the treasure that we buy between each other. So if it gains five dollars, we each pay two fifty for it. So the, if you spend a three, four, or five, you get extra fifty percent from your from your brother. Uh, there's ten dollars dinner of choice. You spend again. If you land on twelve, you get nothing. Uh, you get ten dollars or five dollars put to your treasure bank. Meaning, let's say you buy a game that's worth ten dollars, you get an extra ten dollars on top of that automatically. Uh, you get a. There's another option where you get a void an opponent's treasure item next week, at random, of course. Uh, Seventeen is you get a paid pedicure from the loser. That's nice. And then the last one is a fifteen dollars for the punishment. Why well, fifteen dollars to towards the treasure bank? No, just fifteen dollars. Oh, okay. PayPal or whatever. Okay. The wheel of punishment or wheel of pain? Or wheel of pain. You get a corn dog, an icicle, which Brandon uh, invented. It's a quick shot to the nuts. Yeah. Uh, Cause it's like a stinging shot, like ice. Yeah. <laughs> like an icicle. Yeah. If you land on five, you get no punishment. Uh, so that's your only chance. If you get six or eleven, you spin again. Seven is opponent's choice. Ten or twenty is a chest hair pluck, where you get to get yeah. like <laughs> five, five or six chest hairs and just pull them out. Uh, you get a purple nurple, a nut tap, bitch slap, pie throw, lick the winner's feet. One of them is a Boston crab slash sharpshooter. <laughs> your choice. And seventeen is eat something gross. So these prizes may change depending on if we think of anything better, but I think it'll add excitement to the treasure hunting aspect of this segment. Oh, it will, because when I heard about this Wheel of Punishment Friday, I went out uh, as soon as I got <laughs> off work, and I did my treasure hunting. I, I was not losing this because I do not want a shot to the Mets. Okay, so I guess we'll start with the games first. Yes. So, what's this purple miracle for... For, for starters, it's when you grab them with nipple and twist it. A uh, titty twister? Yeah, kind of. Like, a oh, I know, I, I guess I know why, but. <laughs> and what was that thing about the pie throw? No, oh, that, uh. Did you that pie throw? Where, where did that originate on? Simpsons? Toss point out. Oh. Basically, what you do is you whoever's getting the punishment gets blindfolded, and then so the opponent nut taps him. <laughs> They slaps them and throws a pie in their face. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's only on one, 17, right? And what's the difference between a nut, nut slap and a uh, icicle. icicle? A nut slap, you could use a whole hand. An icicle, you just use like two fingers. Yeah. Um, which one is worse? I think they're both pretty. <laughs> 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 I think the icicle because there's more emphasis on the tip. Yeah. But I we, we we'll agree. see. <laughs> maybe, maybe we will. <laughs> okay, so did you want to... What we're going to do is we're going to rank our games that we found on price charting. I don't know if you wanted to pull that up. Do you have it saved on your phone? I have it saved on mine if you want me to pull it up. Sure, go ahead. Is that your ringtone, Go Go Power Ranger? <laughs> <laughs> it's an uh, alert tone. Uh -huh. It's like the uh, what they used to get from uh, Alpha, Alpha 5. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> From Zordon, <laughs> like Rangers. I text message the uh, the bubble blaster thing in case you were curious. Very, what it was. It's just a this weak little tank thing that shoots bubbles at you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull uh, mine up first. Not very impressive. No, it's not. That's why I don't remember it. <laughs> okay, so this game I found at Dimple, and I was just sitting there like. There's a lot of Sega Master System games that could be worth a lot of money. I bought this one anyway just because it's got the coolest action figure person around. Rambo! <laughs> <laughs> Rambo for the Sega Master System going for $6. Oh, wow. That's a $4 profit? Yep. Did you already say it was worth $10? I just looked it up. It was worth $6. Did, he, did you tell him that it was worth no. $10? How do you know it was a four dollar profit? I uh, pay it cost two dollars, one ninety nine. Oh, and I said six, it's worth. $6. Oh, it's worth six. I'm sorry, I messed that part up. I thought you just knew off the top of your head. It was six dollars. 
I'm going to give you an icicle for that. <laughs> uh, did you want me to reveal my other one, or did you want to go? Uh, I'll go. Mine's very much less impressive. Garland. Owned by Garland. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a boss in Final Fantasy 1, wasn't yeah, it, Garland? I think so, yeah. Or in Dragon War, or one of those. I think he was in Final Fantasy because I never played Dragon War. He was like a wizard or something. Oh, Sky Shark. <laughs> look at the crazed look on the pilot's eyes. It's like a kamikaze pilot. <laughs> okay, let's just put this in price charting and see. Because it changes every day. It could be worth more or less. So we'll see what it's worth. It's kind of weird. I think I saw that at the gym pool and I didn't bother picking it up. <laughs> A dollar? <laughs> okay. Oh, no, you lost money on it. <laughs> let, me, let me check that again because it brought me to the eBay page. Last time I checked, it said 87 cents, so I'll take a dollar. Yeah, a dollar. So I'm a ne negative three dollar profit. <laughs> but you guys aren't factoring that in, though, right? No. You're just doing the overall based, value. Based of off of pure value. So it's worth a dollar. Okay. Didn't you say you had like some rare Super Nintendo game or something? Me? Yeah. No, it's not a Super Nintendo game. Oh. Oh, shit. Actually, quite surprised because I looked at it and I was like, no, nah, I won't get this. Oh. What are you doing? <laughs> oh. <laughs> trying to split me some cards. Is that Digimon? The first one? No. Oh, two. This Digimon World 2. Yeah, that's a fun game. Sure. Oh man, forty dollars! Wow, worth forty dollars. Oh, man. oh, that's loose. That's loose, but complete. If you have the booklet, which I do, the case, fifty dollars. Oh. So we're gonna sell that shit, <laughs> man. <laughs> I got fifty-five dollars to make up, and I found some Dragon Ball cards. How much did you pay for this? Uh, four four ninety nine. Wow. And I looked at it. I was like, Digimon World. Nah. Well, I'll look it up. So and I looked it up, and it was fifty bucks. I was like, no way. And I looked at the. It was the same case and everything. I was like, tight. So uh, I was on Friday. I was able to find some Dragon Ball cards. Um, we'll get into the collection later on in the podcast. But Dragon Ball is uh, the collectible card game that Brad and I have played competitively and have done pretty good in. Uh, they have an online game, the OCG, which I've won, uh, I think, the most tournaments in its existence, so that's pretty cool. But um, there's still some cards out there that are worth $80, $100, $200, so hopefully... I got 500 Yeah, so hopefully I got... We sold um, the Bulma Sensei to get on the... Uh, Tell them Steve Dave. Tell them Steve Dave podcast. And how much did you get for it? Like 270 Yeah. Yeah, for one card. And that went towards our um, Tell them Steve Dave fund. So we'll go on and reveal these one at a time. Uh, so hopefully I get a $100, at least a $100 um, card out of this. So. Promo. Oh, okay. Hero with Block. That, that's what, uh, 50 cents? Yeah. Where'd your cards go? Uh, they're right here. Oh, go ahead. Am, am I revealing these? Yeah. I have no idea what this shit is. Okay. <laughs> now you have to do them face down. What? Like, like put them face down like this, and then just flip. Okay. <laughs> QR block again. 50 cent. Uh, common, nothing. Common, nothing. You could tell the rarity by a bird. If it's a one star, it's just a common. So what's that mean? 50 cent? Nothing. Like nothing. Just mean zero cent? Yeah. Nothing. Uh, uncommon. Nothing. Uncommon. Promo. So Junior Slide. What's that? 50 cents? 25 cents. Oh, come on. Okay. Another heroic. Oh, block. 50 cents. So Junior Slide. Should I make these in piles where they're like the ones that are worth and not worth? Okay. No. We're just looking for jackpots. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Here's a five star foil. Who's the man? I say that's a good two dollar card. I would say like five. Okay. That's five. a five dollar card right there. Middle of nowhere. Rare block, 50 cents. That's nothing. That, yeah, it's just a Dragon Ball Hall of Foil card. Red, Red Trap. The vagina of the Dragon Ball card. <laughs> <laughs> Another hero of block. Alright, so let's count up this value here. Can you drill? Yeah, this is in 
I mean, th these could be used as filler for lots or something, but I don't know what you're expecting to count up. Are those yours? I mean, uh, do these belong to both of you? Or Just, uh, I'm the one that found them, so oh, it would be okay. count towards his. Oh, I see. Like ten dollars at the most. Huh? Ten dollars at the most. What? Total. What were you doing over there? Are you like contemplating or something? No, I'm counting up. How much? How much I get? Ten dollars. I don't know. I'm checking. <laughs> these are because these are twenty-five. Okay. So these are fifty. Two fifty. Three dollars. <laughs> a long way to go with fifty. Oh yeah, fifty dollars. What were you going up to? I thought for some reason I thought you only had like ten bucks. Oh no, yeah, I don't think you came close. Oh man. All right, so we should spin the wheel now. You want to go first? Or you want me to go first? <sighs> you because you get to choose mine, right? Like if you land on one. All right. Time to spin the wheel of morality. Here we go. Nineteen. Nineteen. Oh, I just get to avoid one of your items next thing. <laughs> one. One. Corn dog. <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> Another corn dog. <laughs> <laughs> you said you're not holding back, right? Yeah, that's right. That's what I heard in the last episode. You said you because we're not on vacation anymore. You're not holding back. Give me a second. Let me get video <laughs> capability. <Damn. laughs> oh shit. I didn't get a full. Okay. Oh. I think you need to warm up. You gotta do some tiger knees. Yeah, that's what you should have did was warm up. <laughs> okay, so. so I, I wanted to go back to a few things. Um, Occasionally at work, I'll listen to the podcast to see what we could and could not do better. And listening to episode eight, like a boss, <laughs> um, when we brought up, you brought up the lava that dripped down and met Wiley's last stage, and I said, I think it's blood. And you said, that doesn't make sense for it to be blood. It has to be lava. What about Wiley turning into an alien? Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> no. He didn't turn into an alien. He used a computer to... Project an alien then, he, then he used the computer to turn that lava into blood. <laughs> okay. That's fine. It could be blood. So I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Where's Waldo book I found for the kids. It was the yellow cover, but it did not have the beach scene. I said I would look that up. <laughs> it didn't have the beach no. scene? Oh, I, I, would, I would point it out to you because I think I memorized where the woman was. Mm -hmm. But didn't you buy that used? Yeah, it probably worked out. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. He's a naked maiden. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, going back, I did uh, go out and buy Casino and El Matador. Uh, Aaron talked about El Matador and Casino was on Nick's top list for gambling movies and Las Vegas movies. I tried like hell to get through Casino. That movie's so long. I got through maybe... Doesn't Nicky Santoro die in it? Like at the end. Oh, okay. So at the end, for some reason, I thought he died in the middle. I was like, I didn't even get to the part where Nikki died yet. So I turned it off after the um, quote with the extortionist. 
I'll, I'll go back and finish it. It's just uh, an extremely long movie. I remember on Blockbuster, didn't it, like in, when you rented at Blockbuster, it was two tapes. Two tapes because it's so long, yeah. <laughs> like it. Mm -hmm. I went back and watched my number two movie, The Wizard. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think that's my number. It, it, I think I, you got that from me. Remember you borrowed it from me? Yeah, I think so. And the kids were like, oh, we don't have it. It's scratched up. We can't give it back. They're just lying so they keep watching it. <laughs> and then uh, my favorite character in Casino was James Wood's character. Oh, James Wood is in yeah. there? Yeah. He plays a really good part. A uh, funny part, too. So. <laughs> so that was my go back to. Oh, and we never got to our honorable mentions in our to uh, favorite characters. I know. I noticed that. And I had so many. There were just so many, yeah. though. It would have been there all the, all the live long day. So, top five? We're going to go into our top five list. Top five list this week. I believe it's top five arcade games. Yes, that is right. What? What? You said N NES games. Did I? I I'm going to pull up the text right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have top five arcade games, but that's fine. I'll, I'll think of something on the fly, I guess. Oh man! It's where he said NES. <laughs> I lost like two hours of sleep last night. That's all right. <laughs> now you already have your list. Uh, nah. for the next one. Yeah. I think I might have said for I broke it out uh, on the email thirteen and fourteen because we're going to do two of them. Thirteen was going to be arcade and fourteen NES. I think I might have did that. Hmm. I'm not sure. That's fine. I don't know. Uh, you got a pen? <laughs> yeah. Paper, paper. <laughs> no, I got, I got that. Oh, okay. I could look at the, the sweet Digimon book while we wait. So the top five list we have this week is top five arcade games. Um, I feel sorry for Nick or feel bad for him <laughs> because he thought it was top five NES games, but <laughs> he's actually making a list right now and we're going to be able to get through this. Um, so, my number five I have is going to be Gauntlet. Oh, okay. Because remember uh, at that video store at South Sac, Mr. Video, I think it was called? It was. Mr. Video was on Northgate. Was it? It was one in South Sac. Uh, Where we got the Michael Jackson Thriller tape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we always go over there and play like Gauntlet and we never knew what we were doing, but mm -hmm. it was fun. And they had that horrible cheese popcorn there. Oh, yeah. And when you ate it, the cheese just like stuck all over your mouth. Yep. But Gauntlet was pretty fun. It's like, Red Elf needs help or whatever. Elf needs food badly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just put that one down as my number five. Uh Mine is House of the Dead. <laughs> the shooting game? Yeah. And my top five list gets even, it gets pretty boring after this because each game either has time and or crisis in it. I'm completely joking, yes. Uh, yeah, time and crisis. <laughs> yeah. Um, House of the Dead. I just like uh, all the monsters that were in it. Um, none, there's uh, like House of the Dead 1, 2, 3, 4 they're just all cool different zombies you kill and giant monster boss monsters House of the Dead 2 is the one we actually put at my bachelor party right? yeah on the Dreamcast yeah yeah. foreshadowing um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number 5 was Golden Axe yeah um, I always like using the dwarf character Axe is badass I, I like the short little guy with the big beard going around slaying monsters What's the name, like Thunderhead or... No, I don't remember. Olin, Olin Thunderhead, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't remember. Unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to research, so I don't have a whole <laughs> lot more to say, but I just remember I, I love playing the game. It was it was fun, especially fun to play with other people. So you have like a full party with the uh, the warrior. I think there was like a wizard-type character. I'm not sure. There's an Amazon, uh, the yeah, lady. Another Amazon, yeah, of course. And then was it a wizard or was it just like just a three magician? Characters. There's oh. only three? I thought it was the, the elf, the woman, and the man. I thought there was a wizard tech character too, but I could be wrong. That's uh, fine. I remember that uh, you always used to fight over the who got the magic from the little thief. Yeah. Over the bag. <laughs> and then the dinosaurs or the the monsters you could ride on. That was cool. Yep, yep. That was cool. I remember that as well. 
My number four is going to be Double Dragon. Oh. Uh, came out in 1987. Uh, I remember going to the Dixon County Fair with my mom and Brandon on a field trip. Mm -hmm. And I remember they had an arcade there and they had Double Dragon. And I, I was trying to find you. I couldn't find you anywhere. But uh, Double Dragon was there and I played it. Of course, I always died when I got to the Bobo. The first, like, mid-boss by the barrels. Mm -hmm. Always died there. But I've always wanted to find this game on Sega because I heard that it's like a port from the arcade yeah. version. Never could find it, so I'd love to play through that game again. Yeah. Uh, funny side note, when we went to that Dixon County Fair, there was this annoying kid there named Sean. He was in second grade. Sean Smith? Yeah. Uh -huh. He actually stood behind one of the donkeys, and they kicked him right in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> I never forgot that one because I always thought that must have hurt. I never, I, I never heard of that. That's funny. And he was crying forever. They took him away, and I don't know if he was fine or what, but... Monday he was fine. He looked like the um, the judge from Roger Rabbit. He did. Uh, Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. Didn't you reference that in the last episode? <laughs> <laughs> when did I reference that? I remember I think when I was here. I, I was must have not been the last one. It must have been 11. When I said someone looked like the judge. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You're crazy. Uh, number four on my list is Rostin. Is that the one with the, the Conan thing? We used to call him Conan? Yeah, it was a game in Big G where uh, we thought it was Conan. We couldn't read it at the time. Uh, it looked like Conan, um, but it wasn't Conan. Uh, you, you played this barbarian-like guy who started out with a sword, and it's fast-paced. You run and flash and hack demons and gargoyles, and you, power, you get an axe or a sword with fire on it. And it was just fun. I remember always wanting to play it and only got to play it a few times. I remember Richard... Matt's dad gave us some quarters so that we could play it and died instantly. Uh, there's a chimera, like the bot, the not the boss, but the enemies are heck of cool. Uh, there's um, the music is awesome. It sounds uh, heavy metal. It's fast paced and uh, you fight lizard men, uh, chimeras, gargoyles. Um, it was a great game. Gorgons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gorgons. Gorgon solo. <laughs> uh, my number four is Busta Move. Well, one oh. of the games that was on the, the Neo Geo um, mm -hmm. arcade game where you could pick from like four different games. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Busta Move, it featured the characters from Bubble Bobble, I believe. They yeah. were just shooting little random balls and it was kind of a puzzle game in the you know in the vein of uh, like a Tetris kind of uh, I always I was pretty good at the game so I guess that's probably why I liked it <laughs> I spent a lot of time playing it definitely threw a lot of quarters into many Neo Geo machines to play Bust and Move and I always tried to get the high score um, didn't they have they had one at AR didn't they oh yeah and I remember you getting on the high score list and you put in your uh, initials as SXE and I thought it was sexy, <laughs> but it wasn't sexy. Well, I thought that's what it, what it was for then. Straight edge. Straight oh, okay. <laughs> I never really considered myself to be straight edge. I just didn't do drugs and I didn't drink, so I guess I was. I just, I don't know. You didn't rep it like like all those other people did. But now that you say that, I guess I did. <laughs> I think I, I, I think I, I was actually going to be really embarrassed because I thought you were going to say I put in something like F-A-G or something like that. <laughs> But SXE is all right. I don't give a straight edge. Yeah. That's all. I mean, it's not. It's, there's not really much story to the game. It's just a really fun game to play. My wife loves to play that game. This it's is especially fun multiplayer. Yeah. yeah. You start attacking each other with. There's this. Your moves. There's this on uh, PlayStation Two. They have a Buster move, and there's this one guy who, um, like, when he wins. It looks like his dick's coming out, but he's like a ghost, and it like comes out and taunts the other player. <laughs> so I always choose that guy for the chance when I beat my wife. <laughs> and you you mimic him when you win. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> my number three is gonna be Final Fight. Nice. That game's tight. Um, I I was reading about this last last night, and they said a lot of the characters were based off of uh, 80s rock music, hmm. which you have Axel for you know those big guys in there, yeah. Slash. They had Billy for Billy Idol. They had uh, Poison, like uh, what's his name? Alice Cooper song. No, the band well, Poison. Yeah, uh, <laughs> 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 Michael. They actually 
the, for the first two bosses in Japan were named Damned and Sodom. Sodom. They actually changed the, the, their names to Thrasher and Katana in the English version. Uh, uh, There's uh, someone named Sid for Sid Vicious. Mm. Real cool game. Uh, featured three characters, side scroller, beat him up, Hagar, Cody, and uh, Guy, okay. who was a uh, ninjutsu, which got cut from the Super Nintendo version, which sucks. Mm -hmm. And I remember us getting the Super Nintendo version and popping it in, nowhere near like it was on the arcade. The graphics were dumbed down. We were so pissed, but <laughs> we still played through it. Um, oh, my car. <laughs> <laughs> they changed yeah. the wording on that, too. Didn't you say, oh, my God, in the yeah. arcade? And I remember Matt got to play it one time and he had to hold his pee and he actually <laughs> peed his pants because he beat oh, the first boss. Sick. That's dedication. <laughs> I remember being so mad at mom because he let she let him play an arcade and she never let us play. I remember that too. That's also at Big G. So Final Fight is my number three. I also like the end when you get hit, when you die. Uh, when you lose all your eyes are tied up with <laughs> two and two in front of them. Okay. <laughs> And they shake their head back and forth. <laughs> kind of reminds you of the Double Dragon Neon when you say game over and Skull McGinn's like pointing yeah. his fingers at your eyes. Oh, uh, speaking of Double Dragon Neon, in Vegas, Aaron and I beat that game. We played through all the levels. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you should be bad for bringing your PlayStation on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of had to with, with Aaron there. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron didn't have very much money. If we didn't have that there, we'd probably been just sitting around a lot of the time. My number three is Capcom versus SNK, uh, only because you got I got to pick two of my favorite characters and put them on one team. Ryu, of course. I wasn't into Blanca at the time, <laughs> so I would pick Ryu and Terry Bogard, and they're just an unbeatable combo. I like playing with both of them. Was mine in that game? Maybe. I would have picked her. I don't think she was, but I would have picked her. I thought she was. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, uh, my, but then I know we were like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, not much to say about that game. It was ported over on the Dreamcast, which was really fun. Played a lot of it on the Dreamcast and as well as the arcade. I remember that. I think I, we um, got Red Runner Pizza again yep. when you bought it. And I came over and, and was playing it with you like all day. Yep. And I was like, oh, you get to choose characters based on how strong they are mm -hmm. like did you get a total of four points or yep. something and like to determine on how strong the character was like the weaker characters were one point five you could so, so you could pick up like a one a weak person at one point and then a strong person that was a three point and then at, like four point people you can only pick one like Akuma or Rugal but Saget I remember was a three point character he was pretty strong yeah but most of them were two points so you could pick two my number three is a game we talked about before. It's NBA Jam. Hmm. Probably the best uh, sports game ever to grace the uh, the arcade world. Um, everyone knows what M NBA Jam is. It's a super fun uh, basketball game. It's NBA stands for bas National Basketball. <laughs> 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 what game is this? <laughs> basketball! <laughs> um, it's, it's fun. It's just a two-on-two -two game. I mean, fouling is encouraged, so I mean, you're either swiping at the ball or pushing them down to get the ball. Uh, you do these dunks where you jump like 30 feet up in the air. You do alley oops. You get on, you know, you get on fire. Yeah. Uh, simple game, really fun. Uh, it eats up your quarters pretty quick though, because each quarter, well, each basketball quarter is worth a monetary quarter, so each game would cost a dollar and. Back in the day, that was a lot of money to me, anyway. Right. Yeah, I, I remember that was like the first arcade game that cost a dollar to play fully, and I was like, are you serious? Yeah. Like yeah, that yeah. and Blitz, I was like, oh, I'll just stick to Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you play through the whole game, it might let you play the any any one, and you might get the next quarter for free. I'm not sure. Oh. I remember something like that. But it's still, yeah, it seemed like a lot at the time. That's all I had about for NBA Jam. My number two is going to be Mortal Kombat. Oh yeah, that that game was awesome when it came out. It was the first game to actually where you got to decapitate someone, <laughs> set them on fire, rip their heart out, knock their head off. We were in fifth grade when this came out. Yeah, <laughs> we were like, this is this is hella tight. Uh, I remember we were down at the laundromat. Our uncle gave us these metal slugs. Uncle Joey. Th that were in the shape of a quarter, the size of a quarter, could be used as a quarter, but they weren't quarters. <laughs> 
<laughs> they basically used her lawn hair machines and arcade machines, and he gave his whole pouch of them. <laughs> and my mom was like, don't go spend all those at the arcade. But then she was paranoid to use them at the laundromat in her apartment complex because she w thought that they would have known it was her because they were going to check the Finger laundry frame. machine. No, they were going to check the laundry machine and tell they were on top, and she just did her load. <laughs> but we rode our bikes up there, put in quarters, play Mortal Kombat. They weren't even our bikes. No. They were our uncle's bikes. And um, we went up there, and there were like a, this group of Asian kids there. And Brandon kept on playing a scorpion and did the back back B, uh, get over here, get over yeah. here. back back low punch, I think it was. And he he used that all the live long game. He bought like, mm -hmm. he beat like 20 of them. Just flawless. Kept doing flawless victory. And then the ad told the in injury on when it said, finish him. I would hold block and push up up and you do scorpion's finishing move. <laughs> <laughs> Set him on fire. <laughs> I remember you did, uh, instead of doing the finish him, you did the get over here. <laughs> <laughs> and they were getting hecka mad at you. <laughs> Two Guaylos beating all of them. What's a Guaylo? On uh, Vault of Fury. Oh, yeah. You, you trained the Guaylo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> White boy. Yeah. Uh, and um, that's when Uncle Joey's, went, well, the bike that I rode up there got stolen. Uh, from out right of the front of the laundromat because we were too busy beating everyone. And, and there was like a back room they had in the laundromat where that guy was in there and he'd always have like all those little boys in there. Hmm. Remember that? No, I don't. And we were walking by there and they're always watching TV or a movie and the lights were all out. Hmm. Like, that's creepy. Hmm. But that's why I put Mortal Kombat. I could have put Mortal Kombat 2 on there because Mortal Kombat 2 was way better than Part 1. But Mortal Kombat 1 was injured I fifth to all the blood and the gore and everything. Uh, at the that video game store in Las Vegas we went to they had a Mortal Kombat 2 machine and I played Aaron and I chose Baraka and I was like, let me see if I remember his moves. Back to back, low punch. Yeah. <laughs> Jack him up with that move. Yeah, I love <laughs> Baraka. Uh, my number two was Double Dragon. Uh, said all I had to say about that one. Alright, my number two is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The arcade game. Um, very similar to Final Fight, really. Just kind of stroll along, kicking some ass. Um, that uh, Final Fight, were, were you even allowed to play with three players? I know there's three characters, but you can only play two. It was a two-player right? machine. Yeah. So TMNT, you could play with four players, of course. Uh, Leonardo, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Donatello. Um, just walked around kicking some foot soldier ass. Uh, they fought Bebop, Rocksteady, uh, Shredder, all the characters from the the, the Turtle uh, comics and everything. Yeah, it's funny. I have a lot of whole, whole lot more to say about that. Other than that, is another definitely another quarter eater game yeah. <laughs> because you die a lot in that. Yeah, game. you do. <laughs> uh, my number one is going to be Street Fighter Two. I remember first playing this up Mountain Mike over on Northgate. They got the machine in. And we didn't know what the heck to think of it because you actually got to pick a character and fight against someone. And I remember we tried forever how to use the special moves. And some guy came up to us and was like, I could pick Guile and I could put you in handcuffs and freeze the game. <laughs> and we were all scared that he was going to do it. <laughs> and he, he had a way to glitch the game where it would actually freeze the game. I don't know how he did it, but what? there was a way you could freeze the game on that. i never seen that before. And um, I remember I... <laughs> I asked my Asian friend at in fifth grade how to do a move <laughs> because I thought he'd know because he was Asian. <laughs> and then with Tia Lee. Mm -hmm. and he Tia number one? Yeah, the good one, <laughs> not the evil one. And he said, yeah, you just have to do a 360 with your joystick and push punch. And I tried it. I didn't do it. I pulled off a fireball. And that's how I thought you had to do it. But when the instruction book came out, they finally showed us how to do it on Super Nintendo. And Brandon and I were the first people to actually get the copy in. We thought it was in Sacramento. It could have been, but we went to the G&G &G video game store in Florin Mall. And we called that dude every day. You guys get Street Fighter 2 in yet? When are you going to get it so in? we pre-ordered it. Did we? Yeah, we pre-ordered it. And they called and told us, because it's supposed to come out like... The, the day he called us, it was supposed to come out three days after that, but he said, we're getting it in tomorrow if you want to come pick it up. Yeah, and we went over there and picked it up. And first in line. We like walked right over there, and there were like news cameras there and everything because it's mm. such a big event. And there, the line was huge. And I remember getting even when it was in the arcade when we tried to play it, they had printouts of how to do the moves, 
So it's for the fireball, of course, it's down, down, forward, forward, and punch. So Brad is like, all right, tell me how to do it. I say, push down. He pushed down. Down, forward. He pushed down, forward. Forward, forward. And then it never works. We're like, why is that not working? <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, that was my number one. That was my number one also. <clears throat> I don't remember where I first played it. I think I probably first played it at uh, Papa's Pizzeria in Rolanda, over where it used to be next to the Marvel. Did you guys ever go there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, I think that's probably where I first played it. That's a, that's where I got introduced to a lot of arcade games. Really, best Mortal Kombat was there as well. Best breadsticks in the world, right oh, yeah. there. Yeah, there's, they still make good breadsticks with the. Uh, Marinara sauce, heck of good. It's all heated and warm. Mm -hmm. They deep fry their breadsticks. It's delicious. Yeah, it's pretty good. Best, yeah. best manager in the world, too. He's a Nazi. <laughs> 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 I read her letter one time and called her a Nazi. I think I remember you telling me about that, yeah. Fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing? I called and ordered, because we didn't like to get pizza there, uh, so we were like, their breadsticks, but of course we couldn't get their breadsticks. You tried to get it delivered or something, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, we ordered two hamburgers, some french fries, and breadsticks, and it was just under the or over the delivery fee. She said, you know, people usually get pizza for a delivery. <laughs> and I said, well, what's your delivery fee? And she's like, 15. I was like, okay, well, we're 17, so that's enough, right? And then she said, yeah, I guess. And then I told Brad, and Brad wrote a letter to give the delivery lady when she came to give this back to your manager. <laughs> yeah, I called her a Nazi or something. You called her Hitler. Hitler, that's what I called her. Seems extreme. <laughs> I was extremely <laughs> mad at that point. <laughs> that's like a funny. Do you have any honorable mentions? I have one. I put down The Simpsons because I love The Simpsons, and... When I was little, I always would, would like lose on that game, and I always only got one quarter, so I never got pretty far in that game. Mm -hmm. But I know you could team up with Homer and Bart and like and jump on each other's shoulders or whatever. And March had the vacuum, and you could—it's like uh, Ninja Turtles, mm -hmm. but with four yep. people. Exactly. Uh, I have some honorable mentions. I put Crazy Taxi only because it had the offspring on that, that's, and I was really big into offspring back then. Gay offspring. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, oh, this is heck of cool. There was a Sacramento band that reminded me of the offspring. Pipe, pipe Down. Yeah, Pipe Down is cool. They reminded me of the offspring. Yeah. Uh, I also have down Robocop for the arcade. <laughs> uh, he he would have made my top five if it weren't for one reason. It's really cool when you're playing the game, he'll say like, drop it, or <laughs> your move, creep. But the first boss is Ed 209. <laughs> they start off with Ed Yeah, so you can't do that. That's why I was like, you're not first place, or you're not on my top Take five. Take hard. Uh, Ninja Gaiden also made my honorable mention. Uh, very different from the NES port. Uh, but the first enemies you fight, they're in hockey masks, so they look like Jason Voorhees. <laughs> um, so that was my honorable mention. Um... I listed Lethal Enforcers as an honorable mention. Oh, yeah, that was a fun game. That's, like, the only first-person shooter game, well, I guess, game where you're actually holding a gun <laughs> that I actually enjoyed. It, I, I think it's the original. If there's one before that, there's... I think it is the original, Lethal Enforcers. Yeah. I think it, it is. It was always my favorite one. And they, like, punished you for shooting the, uh, the hostages yeah. and innocent civilians. I thought that was funny. Yeah. I think in that movie, Toys, like, they encourage you to shoot the civilians. Oh, Remember man. That? <laughs> the Robin Williams movie? Yeah, did you ever see that? No, I haven't seen that. Oh, man. The, yeah, basically the, the plot of the movie is uh, some evil guy takes over the toy factory and he starts um, teaching these kids how, how to be killers and use, like, drone, like controlled drone uh, weapons wow. from, from remote locations. So he's training them to shoot innocent civilians with games like Lethal Enforcers. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's funny because, do you have any more honorable mentions? Uh, I was going to say The Simpsons arcade game as well. Mm -hmm. I was going to say Mortal Kombat, which was already mentioned. Um, the only other honorable mention I had was South, South Park Pinball. It's another <laughs> one of uh, very few games that I ever played with my dad. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever go to that pizza place over off the Hillsdale and Willard? It's called B Buffalo's. No, I've uh, seen it. Yeah. My dad and I used to go over there at, like, Every Sunday during the football season to watch football games, and, and we, during halftime we'd go play South Park Pinball. Hmm. So it just kind of has a little soft spot in my heart. Just a normal pinball game. 
just just with a South Park theme. Nothing really special about it. Uh, I told my wife um, that uh, you know the guys are coming over and she wanted to come on and do her top five list. And nice. she was like, um, not really because I never really beat any arcade games. I said, well, I've only beaten like one or two, if that. Um, so she's like. And you know, it kept escalating back and forth. You know, she'd say something like, "Do you rebuttal?" Yeah. And then, so the final straw was she said, "I've never had an orgasm while playing video games, so I wouldn't be able to <laughs> give a good top five list." <laughs> and that just shut me down. <laughs> <laughs>